we're broken, it's tragic We're not all elastic, but maybe there's magic Believe you Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to WWE 2K22 Universe Mode right here on the Noah Nation Gaming YouTube channel. This is episode 22. Welcome to the first WWE main event following that epic Money in the Bank pay-per-view. And coming up later this evening in your main event, the WWE World Tag Team Championships are going to be on the line when Eric and Ivar, the Viking Raiders, look to continue the raid of their Tag Team Championship run against Legato Del Fantasma's Joaquin Wilde and Raul Mendoza. What a Tag Team collision that is going to be later tonight in our main event. The World Tag Team Championships will be on the line, but right now we shift our focus to the Cruiserweight Division as we're kicking things off with a little bit of singles action. First things first. One of the most impressive superstars in the industry today. He calls himself the one and the only Ricochet. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Making his way to the ring from Paducah, Kentucky. Weighing in at 190 pounds. Ricochet. Of course, as we mentioned, this match stemming out of the Cruiserweight division. And this past weekend at Money in the Bank, the Cruiserweight Championship was on the line when the leader of Legado del Fantasma, Santos Escobar, retained the championship. It was an epic battle against then number one contender Isaiah Swerve Scott. Interesting enough, the man Isaiah Swerve Scott beat to originally earn that championship opportunity was this man right here, Ricochet. So Ricochet may feel that he is at the bottom of the barrel right now for a chance at the Cruiserweight Championship in the near future. He's got to start racking up some wins if he wants to climb the ladder and possibly be the next one to challenge Santos Escobar for the Cruiserweight Championship. But here comes his opponent representing Lucha House Party, let's say Dorado. And his opponent representing Lucha House Party from San Juan, Puerto Rico. Weighing in at 168 pounds, Lindsay Dorado. We've seen Lucha House Party member Ray and Metalik in recent weeks challenge Santos Escobar for the Cruiserweight Championship. That was Santos' first title defense after winning the Cruiserweight Championship back at Backlash. But Lindsay Dorado here could be looking to get his name in the hat for a future championship opportunity for himself. It should be a great way to kick us off here tonight. A little bit of cruiserweight action. Ricochet going one-on-one -on -one with Lince Dorado. Your first WWE main event following the Money in the Bank pay-per-view. It's going to be a great night. The World Tag Team Championships on the line as the Viking Raiders defend the championships against Legado del Fantasma's Joaquin Wilde and Raul Mendoza. Can't wait to see those two tag teams go at it with the gold on the line tonight. It's going to be a very interesting contest with the Viking Raiders coming off that tag team title defense against Danny Burch and Rooney Lorcan at Money in the Bank. But here we go right here. Let's focus on the action inside the ring at the current moment. Lince Dorado and the one and only Ricochet. Very interesting pairing here between two very exciting cruiserweights in the division today. Both these men looking to climb the ladder, climb the ranks, and possibly be the next one to fight Legado del Fantasma Santos Escobar for the Cruiserweight Championship as Ricochet sends Lince Dorado for a ride over the top rope and down to the floor out here at ringside. Lince on spaghetti legs. Here comes Ricochet with the corkscrew. Moves that make the one and only, truly a one and only competitor inside the squared circle. Ricochet feeling it here in the early going. Look at this. Looks like he was possibly going to run at Lince for another high-flying maneuver with the referee, allowing Lince Dorado to get back into the ring, bring, bring things back to a level playing field here. We want to thank you all for joining us here this evening. While you're with us, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe right here on the YouTube channel. A lot of Universe Mode content awaiting you if it's your first time viewing. As Lince now takes Ricochet for a ride, Ricochet goes over the top, and Lince... He's got a crazed look in his eyes. I think Lince Dorado's looking to one-up Ricochet here. Suicide dive to the outside. Very impressive from Dorado there. Like I said, I think he was looking to one-up the one and only. We saw that corkscrew from Ricochet moments ago. Now Lince follows it up with a dive through the ropes. And Ricochet definitely going to be a little dazed after taking Lince full on. Head of steam, but there's Ricochet bouncing back with a nice clothesline there. 
It looked like he was going for that hangman's neck breaker, but Lince Dorado, smart enough, able to sidestep it. Ricochet eats the canvas. It's the most exciting thing about the cruiserweight division is you get so many different styles. You expect a lot of high flying, but you see so much power and diversity in the division. Lince Dorado, he knows how to go high flying, but he's got some size on him. And so does Ricochet. Both these men in incredible shape. Both of them very strong inside the ring. Both of them know how to get it done without just having to take it to the air every single time, even though that is what they do best. And Ricochet went for the pump kick there. There's a nice sidestep by Lince Dorado. Picking him up. Brings him down to the canvas. Ricochet eating the map down below. And we got a collar and elbow here. Lince Dorado looking to take advantage. Over the one and only, but Ricochet still hanging in it. Back and forth here in the early going of this contest. Nice shot. That time he hits that kick. And that time he hits the hangman's neckbreaker that he was looking for a few moments ago. Ricochet has got Dorado right where he wants him here. And Ricochet going where he feels comfortable. The top of the shooting star press from Ricochet. Taking it to the air. Airborne was the one and only, but it wasn't enough to put Lince Dorado away there. Very impressive from Ricochet, able to string together a nice set of maneuvers there. The Hangman's neck breaker followed up with a shooting star press, but it was not enough to keep the member of Lucha House Party down. Ricochet's a smart competitor inside that ring. He's keeping the momentum going. We know Ricochet can get it done. He's a former NXT North American champion as well as a former United States champion. Ricochet very impressive inside the squared circle. Because of maneuvers like that, hits that super kick flush on Dorado. And now a springboard goes for the 450 splash, but Dorado able to sidestep and gets out of the way. And now look at this little bit of the code red. And Ricochet may be in trouble here. Now Dorado's going to the top. He hits a shooting star press of his own. Looking to one up the one and only once again. That's going to be all, but Ricochet gets the shoulder up just in the nick of time. What a fantastic cruiserweight contest we got kicking us off here tonight on WWE Main Event. Back and forth we go between these two resilient cruiserweights here. Now Ricochet is looking to fight back over Dorado. He's bringing him up top, but Dorado kicks him off. Oh, but now Ricochet kicks him off, and oh, what a double knees there. I don't even know if that's what Ricochet was originally going for. But after Dorado's counter, Ricochet found a new maneuver, and now he follows up with that recoil knee. And just like that, that's going to do it. Ricochet bounced back after the counter from Dorado, hung him up with the double knees in the corner, and then followed that up with the recoil knee. The one and only Ricochet picking up a resilient and hard-fought win in this cruiserweight battle versus Lince Dorado. Respect to Dorado, but on this night, Kicking us off on WWE main event. The one and only Ricochet stands tall in a fantastic contest. Can't wait to see what's next for these two men in the cruiserweight division. We're going to keep the action rolling on here on WWE main event before we get to our world tag team title contest in moments. We got a little bit of action coming from the women's division. Here comes the veteran Mickey James set for action. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Making her way to the ring from Richmond, Virginia, Mickey James. So Mickey James looking to get back in the winning ways here tonight. Last time we saw her, she was trying to qualify for the Money in the Bank ladder match where she was unsuccessful. Of course, the Money in the Bank ladder match for the women was won by the Empress of Tomorrow, Asuka. And of course, the Women's Championship match at Money in the Bank we saw Bianca Blair retain the championship over Rhea Ripley. Is your top women of the division right now. Mickey James, we know she knows how to get it done inside the ring. She's a veteran, as we mentioned. She's a former women's champion, former Divas champion. She's been around the world. She's won gold everywhere. But now she's looking to win gold sooner rather than later once again here in the WWE. But tonight, her challenge is one-on-one -on -one with a debuting superstar from NXT. This should be a good one. And from Glen Ridge, New Jersey, Casey Catanzaro. Casey Catanzaro making her WWE main roster debut here tonight. She's been in NXT for quite some time. She's impressed down there. She's had championship opportunities in the past, 
But now she is here on the main roster. And she's got a style that not many of others can. She's a former American ninja warrior. And she's showcasing her skills right off the get-go, climbing up that ring post. She's very impressive. She's small, but she's fast. And she strikes hard inside of the ring. This is going to be our first appearance officially here on the main roster. And she's going one-on-one -on -one with a huge test in the veteran Mickey James. This will be a very interesting contest. The young versus the wise here tonight on main event. Should be a great opportunity for Casey Catanzaro to prove herself against Mickey James. But like we mentioned, Mickey James has been struggling to get in the win column as of late. And she's looking to get that W and climb the ranks once again in the women's division. So here we go. Should be a good matchup here. I'm very intrigued by the pairing. Mickey James, Casey Catanzaro right here kicking us off. Or excuse me, moving us on on WWE main event. As Casey tried going low there, but immediately Mickey James, using her veteran instinct, to sidestep it and then brings her down with a suplex. It's Casey Catanzaro, like we said, making her main roster debut. We've seen her on the main roster before. She has a Royal Rumble appearance in her books. And as we mentioned, she's coming straight from NXT, where she spent the last few years. She's had championship opportunities there in the past. And Mickey James, what a maneuver there. A nice Hurricane Rana from the top rope. Mickey James not taken. This newcomer to the main roster lightly here is really bringing the fight to her. But now Casey Catanzaro, there's some of her innovative offense. With that cartwheel leg drop. Some of the exciting offense you're going to see from Casey Catanzaro inside the squared circle. There's a huge opportunity for her against somebody of the caliber of Mickey James in the women's division. There's that maneuver that she was looking for when the bell rang. That low drop kick taking Mickey James off her feet. And sending her face first into the canvas below. Now Casey Catanzaro striking fast and striking hard there. And Mickey James is all tied up in the corners. Again, as we mentioned, Bianca Blair retaining the women's championship at Money in the Bank over Rhea Ripley. Rhea Ripley bouncing back with a win this past week on Raw. And on the flip side, the women's Money in the Bank ladder match was won by the Empress of Tomorrow, Asuka. A very interesting situation in the women's division right now. A lot of women heating themselves up, and everybody's looking for opportunities. Now, Casey Catanzaro, what a move that was with that scissors and taking Mickey James over. Does it again. It's going to unbalance her there, but there's James with the Luthes press over Casey Catanzaro. Again, not taking the newcomer lightly here is Mickey James. She knows what she's got to do to get it done inside the square circle. She's not going to take another loss, especially to someone who, in her eyes, she probably considers a rookie. Even though Casey Catanzaro has been in this business for a number of years, she's not been in anywhere near as long as Mickey James. She just hangs Casey Catanzaro with a simple but effective move up on the top rope. And both women going for a maneuver there. And it was interesting enough because Mickey James missed the drop kick, ended up eating the canvas, and Casey kind of unintentionally landed on her with a senton. Things working out, and the maneuver of Casey Catanzaro, and a mid kick out of nowhere from Mickey James, and Casey able to kick out. Casey almost got her lights knocked out there. She was staring up at the lights of the arena out of nowhere. Mickey James with that mid kick, and now she's hooking her. Casey may be in trouble, big time DDT as Casey eats the canvas. Into the cover goes Mickey James, and Mickey James. Picks up the victory here on main event. An impressive debut from Casey Catanzaro here on the WWE main roster. But that was not enough as Mickey James able to string together the right maneuvers and beat the rookie inside of the squared circle tonight. Mickey James getting back in the winning ways and picking up a huge win here in the women's division. Disappointing loss for Casey Catanzaro. But we know she'll be back. Well, ladies and gentlemen, coming up with the next episode of Universe Mode on Monday Night Raw, the rivalry continues as Rhea Ripley gets one more opportunity at Bianca Belair for the WWE Women's Championship. And this time, it's going to be a no-holds-barred match. What is going to happen when these two women go one-on-one -on -one in the main event of Raw with the championship on the line where absolutely anything will go? But speaking of the main event, it is time for the World Tag Team Championships to be defended as Legato Del Fantasma has himself a date with Eric and Ivar, the Viking Raiders. The following contest is scheduled for one fall 
and is for the WWE World Tag Team Championship. Introducing the challengers at a combined weight of 365 pounds, Raul Mendoza and Joaquin Wilde. Legado del Fantasma. So we talked about a lot earlier tonight of the recent success of the leader of Legado del Fantasma, Santos Escobar, the current cruiserweight champion of the world. He's been on a very impressive and dominating run as of late. But now, Joaquin Wilde and Raul Mendoza are going to bring more gold to the Legado del Fant Fantasma family as the world tag team champions. But they got to get it done over a very tough task. Eric and I, Bar, have been almost perfect since winning the World Tag Team Championships. And every time those titles have been on the line, they have come out victorious. Will that story continue tonight? Eric and Ivar coming off a very impressive victory at Money in the Bank over Danny Burch and Oni Lorcan. Now they stand across their next challengers. Here come the World Tag Team Champions, the Viking Raiders. And introducing the champions, a combined weight of 552 pounds. They are the World Tag Team Champions, Ivar and Eric the Viking Raiders. Their World Tag Team Championship run began on the first episode of A New Era in Universe Mode, when they defeated the old champions Riddle and Randy Orton RK Bro. They went on to retain the championships in a rematch against RK Bro back at Backlash. The next time they would defend their championships, as we mentioned, would be this past weekend at Money in the Bank when they retained the championships over Danny Burch and Oni Lorcan. Now they move on to championship match number four and title defense number three of this current run. And now the new challengers, Joaquin Wilde and Raul Mendoza, Legato del Fantasma, who is gonna walk away of this main event with those beautiful WWE Tag Team Championships of the World. I am pumped up. This is going to be an exciting contest between two phenomenal tag teams. And with the gold on the line, you know these guys are going to leave absolutely everything inside the squared circle. The champions holding over their tag team gold. Will it be the last time they pass those titles over to the referee? Will they be walking away and new? Or excuse me, and still? Or will Legato del Fantasma be walking away and new? We're going to find out right here, right now. The bell has rung and we're kicking things off with Raul Mendoza and Ivar inside of the squared circle. Should be a hell of a main event and man, I can't wait. For the next episode of Universe Mode on Monday Night Raw, Rhea Ripley, Bianca Belair, the WWE Women's Championship going to be on the line as Rhea gets one more opportunity against Belair, this time in a no-holds-barred match. Their rivalry has been storied over the last number of weeks, Rhea Ripley laying out Bianca Belair in numerous occasions, and of course a money in the bank, Bianca defeating Rhea Ripley on that night. Rhea Ripley picking up a win this past Monday Night on Raw, and now she's earned herself one more opportunity and one more meeting against Blair. And those two are going to go at it with absolutely anything goes inside the squared circle. I cannot wait to see what those two women do this month, this coming Monday on Raw. Well, let's get to the action inside of the ring right now. Ivar and Raul Mendoza. The cruiserweight style of Raul Mendoza and Joaquin Wilde versus the heavyweight style of Eric and Ivar. A very interesting pairing. As I, There you go. Ivar tagging in Eric and Eric with a huge knee on Mendoza. I'm sure Santos Escobar resting up after his matchup at Money in the Bank. Keeping his eye on Legado del Fantasma here. Hoping they bring more championship gold to the family. As Eric take it over Raul Mendoza with that huge knee. Nice shot there. And you gotta be wondering, no matter who wins this matchup, who is gonna be next in line to challenge for the World Tag Team Championships of the World? Numerous teams lined up in the division. I'm sure Danny Burch and Lorcan would love to get another shot. 
And whoever wins the championships here, I believe Raul Mendoza's got a cut over the eye there. Drawing blood in the early going. Oh yeah, that's a brutal, brutal opening over the eye there. I believe that might have been off the forearm or so of Eric. Eric's got to watch his back as Mendoza going after him here, even with the blood drickling from the forehead. But as we were mentioning, who is going to be next in line? Regardless of who wins this match here for the World Tag Team Championships. I'm sure Danny Burch and Oni Lorcan would love to get another opportunity at the gold. You got Rey Mysterio and Dominic. You got Alpha Academy. Hell, I know things have been rocky for him as of late, but I'm sure Randy Orton and Riddle wouldn't mind getting their names back in the hat for the World Tag Team Championships. What about the team that beat RK Bro this past Monday on Raw, the Hurt Business? Who knows who's going to be next? Whether it's Legado del Fantasma or whether it's the Viking Raiders. It could be Wild picking up the win here, but Eric getting his shoulder up. You see the pace has been a little slow in the early going. These teams feeling each other out. Hitting a couple of impactful, impactful maneuvers, excuse me. The World Tag Team Championships on the line. Neither team looking to make a mistake here. As there we got the tag to Raul Mendoza. Nice double team there as Joaquin Wild using his partner as a lawn dart. And a huge shoulder block to, by Raul Mendoza. And there's Eric with the counter off the forearm. That's the same forearm, I believe, that opened Mendoza up earlier. As he's trickling blood from the forehead, that's not going to pay him any dividends. The later this match goes on. A nice counter there. We got a little bit of back and forth action between Mendoza and Eric right here. And a nice corkscrew. And Eric eating the canvas. That'll definitely shake you up. Possibly give you a concussion inside of the ring. Now back and forth we go again. Reversal after reversal from these guys. And Eric brings him in and slams him down with the sidewalk slam. A nice knee to the back. Eric's been in the last number of minutes. Probably a good time to make a tag if I'm him. Especially after going back and forth with Mendoza. These two cruiserweights are definitely going to wear out Eric and Ivar. If anything, they probably have more conditioning than the Viking Raiders. We know how the Viking Raiders can go to war inside the ring. And how powerful and dominant they can be. And these cruiserweights, they're known to go long. They're known to go high, go high and go hard. So I'm sure it's probably in the best interest of the Viking Raiders to get this thing done earlier. Oh, there's a nice maneuver. Ivar got the tag, tried coming in hot, but Joaquin Wild was able to sidestep him. And Ivar shook here. Eric's down on the outside. This could be a huge opportunity for Legado del Fantasma to capitalize and possibly become the World Tag Team Champions. And a nice kick from Joaquin Wild. Look at this. Goes over and uses his momentum to take Ivar down with that code red. Impressive maneuver from Joaquin Wild. Sending him into the corner. And just imagine if Lakata del Fantasma can bring home even more gold. The entire family is going to be holding gold and being dominant over the WWE. There's Ivar looking to make sure that doesn't happen. With a big time splash, Ivar's put men away with those splashes in the past. Obviously the biggest man in the matchup. Remember back when the Viking Raiders won the World Tag Team Championships, it was off a big, big time splash from the top rope from Ivar. The final now in the coffin of that match and a nice spinning leg lariat by the big man. Joaquin's got to be dazed and confused here and he follows it up with the big boot. Ivar's really striking hard after those couple maneuvers. Now sending him into the corner. Oh, but Joaquin Wild, he's trying to wake up here. He's trying to fight back. And now we got a tag to Eric. Eric got a couple minutes to breathe. Look at this. Ivar sending... Joaquin Wild down off the double team. Eric into the cover. It's going to be all here. But what? No, Joaquin Wild gets the shoulder up. Viking Raiders close to retaining the tag team championships there, but not yet, says Joaquin Wild. Great tag team matchup we got so far. A lot of back and forth action in this contest. There's another team, another double team, and another tag for the Viking Raiders. Ivar, once again, the legal man. And another splash from the big man. It almost goes to the pin there, but Joaquin's Wild's feet under the bottom rope. He could definitely use the tag there to Raul Mendoza. I mean, he would be considered the fresher man, but he still has blood trickling from the floor head, so I don't know how fresh Mendoza can really be here. This Ivar at the Bronco Buster. Ivar is feeling it here, but he's got to pay attention. Joaquin Wild makes the tag to Raul Mendoza. Ivar trying to cut him off. Mendoza is still suffering from the blood loss. 
Sends him into the corner. Look at this. Clothesline. Follows it up with a bulldog. The Viking Raiders are feeling it here. Ivar's going to the top. We mentioned he's put men away before with this maneuver. Big time splash for the Viking Raiders. And almost retaining the World Tag Team Championships there. But Mendoza still got the fight in him to kick out. Ivar picking him up. He's got Mendoza on the shoulders here. Look at this. This is a maneuver. And Santos Escobar, the leader of Legado del Fantasma, also perfects. Mendoza eats the canvas into the cover again. But Mendoza gets the shoulder up. Man, regardless of the finish of this matchup, you got to be impressed with Legado del Fantasma here tonight. Like him or not, Joaquin Wilde and Raul Mendoza certainly putting on a gutsy performance in this tag team championship affair. Oh, and a nice shot by Mendoza there off the counter. He is trying to use his speed and agility over the big man. Ivar trying to cut him off. Ivar very agile for his size, but Mendoza cuts him off in a nice DDT. Brings the big man down to the mat. Goes for the cover, but it's not even close there. Legado Del Fantasma has got a couple of minutes of making up to do. Over offense over the Viking Rangers. They're going to win the World Tag Team Championships there. But there's a nice kick from Ivar. Nice leg Larry to Joaquin Wild. Ivar's going to the top. He could be looking for that big five. Super, super fly splash. And Joaquin might have the breath taken out of him. And Ivar picks up the win for the Viking Raiders. Very impressive performance from Joaquin Wilde and Raul Mendoza in this contest. Legado del Fantasma definitely impressive in this main event. But regardless, Eric, Ivar, they're continuing their dominance over the tag team division. And they are walking away, still holding the gold. After surviving everything that Legado del Fantasma had to offer here tonight, including maneuvers like that, just sent Eric for a ride. What a great contest this was for the World Tag Team Championships. I would love to see these teams run it back in the near future. As we check out maneuvers here, Ivar and Eric, they pulled out a lot of double team maneuvers that almost put Legado del Fantasma away. But in the end, it was Ivar's coming from the top rope with that signature splash we've seen him do before. And the question continues, who is going to be the one to take the tag team champions off the top of the mountain? Because right now, there looks like there's nobody in sight to continue and stop the dominance of Eric and Ivar. Thank you for joining us here tonight, and we'll see you on Universe Mode Episode 23 for Monday Night Raw. Good night, everybody.